Oh, what's your problem, dude? You've got major issues. Number 10, became a religious fanatic. It's time for Kirk Cameron, and I think it's important for all of you to hear his inspiring message about the Word of God. Ah, uh, again, Meg? In this Season 7 episode, Meg finds religion, but instead of being a positive influence on her life, it brings out the worst in her. Becoming judgmental and patronizing, she is determined to convert Brian, an atheist, at all costs. You gonna get it, boy? No, please, no. Go get it, boy! <laughs> Okay, I'll take Jesus back now. She manages to turn the town against him to the point that he can't go about his day without being pestered for his secular beliefs. Local churchgoer and junior Christian soldier Meg Griffin has identified the atheist as Brian Griffin of Spooner Street. She even tries to get him to take part in a book burning to, quote, destroy everything that is harmful to God. A person's beliefs, or lack thereof, are incredibly personal. And to try to force anyone to be or do something they don't connect with crosses so many lines. Thankfully, Brian manages to make her see reason. And what kind of god would put you in a house where no one respects or cares about you, not even enough to get you a damn mumps shot? Oh no. You're right, Brian. Number 9. Got Physical on a Driver Ah, oh, this sucks. Can you believe I'm stuck with Meg driving me around? Dad, it's just you and me in the car. When Peter loses his license, it falls to Meg to have to drive him and all his drinking buddies around town. With her inebriated father and the guys tormenting her in the back seat with their childish antics, Meg understandably grows increasingly frustrated. Ah! Oh, Rose, will you stop it? But instead of kicking them all out or insisting that she won't take that kind of abuse, she redirects her anger in the worst way possible. When she stops suddenly, the vehicle behind her rear ends her car. And when the other driver comes up to confront her, she gets out and beats the heck out of him. Yes, she was being harassed, but violence is no way to deal with it. In real life, she would be looking at some major charges. Meg, that was awesome! Number 8. Faked her sexuality Hey, do you want to join my after-school club? Sure! Meg is not the most popular girl at school. So when she makes a new friend, she's naturally excited. As it turns out, however, her new friend Sarah thought she was a lesbian like her. Meg is invited to the Gay Alliance Club at school, where, upon learning they were planning a party for her, she backpedals on her attempt to correct them, turning a misunderstanding into a full-blown lie. But I guess if you're not a lesbian... Wait, wait! You didn't let me finish! I'm not a lesbian! I'm a super huge mega lesbian! Oh good! You'll fit in with the other mega lesbians! My heart's on fire! What makes this so bad is that there's no reason they couldn't be friends anyway. Kids in the LGBTQ community are frequently told that they choose their orientation. And so, Meg's lie is a hurtful one for multiple reasons. And ultimately, her motivation for keeping up the charade was a deeply selfish one. It was wrong of me to mislead you. I should go. That was awful. That was just awful. Number seven, harbored an escaped con. Oh, I don't expect you to wait for me, Meg. No, I will, Luke. If it takes 10 years or 20 years, I will be here when you get out. Meg has not exactly been lucky in love, but after taking part in a pen pal assignment for school, she falls for someone. Unfortunately, the person in question happens to be a convict. At first, she just visits him in prison, but when he breaks out, she actually tries to hide him from the law. My God, how did you get out? I filed down a toothbrush to a fine point and stabbed the guard with the most kids. What? I'm just kidding. Oh, I'm still getting used to your sense of humor. Despite being caught, she refuses to call the police to take Luke back to prison. Harboring a fugitive is a felony, no matter how sweet he may seem. Sure, she thought she was doing it for love, but doing something so illegal behind her family's back put them all at risk. It's a crime with serious consequences, which is something she found out the hard way. You're under arrest for harboring an escaped convict. Oh, well, that's only fair because after all, I did hide him from the- What? Number six, got aggressive at home and school. Um, any particular direction? That way. Of course, the story from our previous entry does not end there. Having been thrown in the slammer after getting caught for harboring her fugitive boyfriend, Meg returns home with a new edge to her. I'm home. You're all my bitches now. Hardened from prison, Meg quickly establishes herself as the new head of the household. First question, who's the biggest, toughest guy in this house? Well, I don't like to toot my own horn, but I believe I hold the distinction of- <laughs> Continuously dishing out violence or threats of violence, she keeps her family in terror and the kids at school on eggshells. 
From smashing teeth to destruction of property to implied assaults, this is not the old Meg. Prison can be rough, and yes, it can change people, but this is extreme, and even she knows it. Thanks for reminding me who I really am. Number five, planned to disastrously trick Chris. There he is, the reason my bedpost is so shiny. With a new kid in town, Meg finds herself nursing a crush. But when she finds out that Ken is gay and more interested in her brother Chris than her, she is devastated. Look, I really like you as a friend, but to be honest, I like Chris. What? Rather than just move on, Meg tries to convince Chris that he has to sleep with Ken and then tell her what it's like. But it gets worse. Chris refuses, so she takes her plans a step further. She gets roofies in order to drug Chris and tells Ken that Chris wants him and is waiting asleep in his bed for him. Chris, I made some Kool-Aid. You want some? Sure. Yeah, you heard that right. Thankfully, she doesn't go through with it, but still, she plotted an assault on her own brother for her own vicarious enjoyment. Number four, filmed a hot dog video. In something of a send-up of the 1987 high school flick, Three O'Clock High, Meg accidentally draws the wrath of a school bully and is challenged to an after-school showdown. Three o'clock, Friday. I will destroy you. Like the meek Jerry Mitchell in the film, she tries to get out of the fight in a number of ways, including getting expelled from school. Her methods for expulsion were extreme, to say the least. That sex tape I released should be everywhere by now, and then they'll have to kick me out of the school. She decides to make a sex tape involving hot dogs and then upload it to the internet, in effect releasing a kind of pornography. The episode itself came under intense scrutiny, and an indecency complaint was filed with the FCC. You know what? Good for her. Number three, took advantage of Chris. <laughs> Busted. After catching Chris stealing from their mom's purse, Meg decides to blackmail her brother. Her demands start off small, making Chris do her homework slash clean a room, etc. Basic sibling stuff. But then her requests get increasingly disturbed, like stalk outside of Planned Parenthood, take the names of the girls who go inside, and then dial them up with some seriously messed up crank call material. All right, good. Now I want you to call them as if you're their dead baby. She also reveals to Chris, or at least heavily implies, that she is an anti-Semite. Like, I'm part of a group that kind of trashes Anne Frank's house every year. Basically, she goes way beyond a little sibling rivalry. What she does and wants is downright criminal. Number two, tried to become the new Mrs. Swanson. Hi, honey. What? What'd you say? I just said hi. Is that, uh, is that Bonnie's dress? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Meg is so starved for love, it usually doesn't take her long to get obsessive when someone shows her even the most basic affection and kindness. And so what starts off as a neighborly gesture turns into something dark. Hey, who's that, your boyfriend? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's my boyfriend. While checking in on Joe and Susie while Bonnie is away, Meg becomes infatuated with Joe, blowing the smallest thing out of proportion to convince herself he loves her too. To keep Joe's wife away longer, she plants a gun in Bonnie's luggage and gets her arrested at the airport. And later that night inserts herself into the Swanson family life by breastfeeding Susie in public. Meg is beyond inappropriate. Oh, 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 oh God! Oh! Hey man, just because you are the member of the family that gets picked on the most doesn't mean you don't do some shady things yourself, I guess. Yeesh, I'm not even touching this list. So before we find out the worst thing Meg Griffin has done, Let's get through these dishonorable mentions. Hi, Meg. Can I help you? Hands in the air, Goldman! Oh my god! What are you doing? Give me your money! <gasps> oh. My. God. Chris? Meg? Ah! 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 Oh my god! What are you doing here? Oh, what's the matter, Mike? Can't punch a girl in the face? You'd be surprised what my face can do to you! Uh, what's your problem, dude? You've got major issues. Number one, obsessively went after Brian. Hi, honey. What? I was thinking about our kiss last night. I never knew how flat and wide your tongue was. Remember what we were saying about Meg becoming obsessive over guys who show her the slightest attention? Well, you can add kidnap and assault to her love-struck rap sheet. When no one will take her to the dance, Brian steps up. He even defends her from Connie D'Amico later in the night. 
Even though he was just being a friend, albeit a drunk, kissy friend, she takes this to mean, you guessed it, that they're in love. My hair is in the pie, Brian. And now it's inside of you. Part of me is inside of you, Brian. Do you feel me, Brian? Do you feel me inside of you? She starts off by sending him creepy baked goods, but soon goes straight for the felony charges by knocking him out, kidnapping, and even worse. Meg has got a lot of issues, and for everyone's sake, ought to get some serious help. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.